All right, welcome back, Mac 1340 uh, PLCs. We're gonna go over just how to use a memory coil uh, today. So memory coils, remember they're going to store what happened. Um, they're not actually tied to any physical device out in the field. They're not a physical device, it's internal memory that you're storing. So you're gonna store the, you know, this event and this event happened or this event or this event happened and so on and so forth. So I've already got my PLC set up, so if you need to do that, rewatch lecture one uh, PLC setup, and I already have my IO uh, addresses correctly changed so that I'm using uh, 0, 0.0 through 0 0.7 through for my digital inputs, and I'm using 4.0 through 4.7 for my digital outputs. So let's just go ahead and ring something in here to a memory coil, okay, and show that an event happened. So let's have a start button. All right, so I'm gonna. I'm over here. Made, I made a new tag table, and you got to make your tags. So I'm gonna type in start. All right, and then I'm gonna do stop. Remember, I can't use the P, so it's gonna be STO. Um, I'm just gonna do memory uh, one, just to have. Okay, and then we're gonna have light one that turns on. Okay, so. I've typed in all those, but we got to make sure that we got all the addressing uh, correct. So the light, right, needs to be an output. So I'm going to make sure that I come over here and I change this to a Q for output. And then I want to make sure that it's 4.0. So 4 point in bit 0 when I do that. Okay. And then I want to do my memory coil. Okay. So I'm going to come here under my identifier. I'm going to choose memory. Okay. And I can kind of give it whatever I want here. I'm going to go uh, zero, 0, just so I can choose the first one. It's a memory one, so I can define that. That's not something that I have to define in the I.O. tags. I just need to be consistent uh, with what I'm doing and how I'm using it. Okay, so everything is kind of tied in here. I've got my two inputs, and I've got my memory coil, and then I've got my output for my light. So let's see how we use a memory coil here. So if we go to the program block, okay, I'm going to open up the main OB1, okay, and then I'm going to drop in like my my stop button and my start button, and then I'm going to output to the memory coil here. Okay, so I'm going to double click here, and I'm going to choose the stop button. I'm going to double click here, choose the start button, and then over here we're going to choose the memory coil. Okay, so. Now I have the start and stop button are in series. So say I want to use this. So this might be you know useful when we're doing the uh, the stoplight program to run everything with a memory coil. So I don't have to retype this into every network. So say there was four or five things that I needed to always have happen that were like anded or word together. And instead of rewriting those in my network every single time I needed them, I stored them into a memory address. So I only have to write one address instead of four or five things. So advantage here. So let's go down to network two, and I'm going to drop in a normally open contactor here, and then I'm going to do an output. Okay. I want the output to be the light. Okay. So we're going to go down here and do light one. And then this input right here, I can actually use the memory coil as a normally open contactor. So it's universal. I'm going to store that that event happened, that the start and um, stop button are on correctly, and that memory is going to drive the light. Very simple, very basic uh, program. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure that we compile and make sure that we don't have any warnings. I've got a couple warnings here. Uh, it just says my PLC doesn't have a password. That's, that's okay. I have zero errors, so that's good. All right, and then I want to go ahead and download this to the PLC. All right, and uh, I haven't set my PLC up yet, so I got to make sure that I hit start search. Okay, and we're going to wait for it to find the actual PLC on here, and it's highlighted right here, so this is just where we want to load that PLC. And continue without synchronization and load. We should be good here in a second, and we'll finish. Once it's done loading, hit finish. All right, I'm going to pull this down just a little bit so I can see both uh, networks working or both rungs working. I'm going to hit the glasses up here so I can monitor the system. So I can see that it's ready to go. All right, I'm using the, uh, the Festo um, IO sim right now. We can also use it on the Amatrol 87 iOS in class here as well. 
Okay, uh, you can't see this obviously, but you'll be able to see my screen uh, when it changes and when it doesn't change. Okay, so if we take a look at this, um, uh, the normal the stop buttons uh, normally close contact. So when I hit the start button here, it should energize the memory coil, and that memory coil should turn on the light. So uh, as simple as that, we've stored, you know, that the uh, the stop and the start button uh, were met. All right, and that's stored into memory, and that memory's controlling the light. So like I said, the advantage to using a memory coil in this case, so if I turn it off, you can see how it's going to affect it. The advantage to using the memory coil, okay, is like I said before, if we have four or five things anded in a row that we need to keep and we have to use throughout a program, it's a very big advantage for us to store it into memory so that we don't have to, like I said, use all those normally open and normally closed contactors because we're limited to a certain number on a rung anyways. We're limited to 10. So say we want to you know, store more than 10 events happened at once. We put them into a memory coil and then continue on and add it on to another memory coil. Now I can put memory coils in series as well and or them and do all kinds of different things. So I recommend when we do the stoplight program or the garage door program that you maybe try using a memory coil. Okay? Because you know the memory coil even though it's driving if I turn off the stop button now it'll still shut everything down even though the start button's active all right this, the e-stop will still shut everything down so all right guys that's it I do want you using memory coils and things like that in your programs but uh, if you have any questions feel free to email me or tell me if I need to uh, zoom meet or team meet for any of this else guys have a great day I'll see you in lab